Greetings everyone. My name is Greg Puno. I am a graduate student at Gonzaga University Health Systems Leadership Program and I welcome you to my presentation on the principles of high reliability organizations within healthcare institutions. As you progress through the material, you will be able to describe how high reliability organizations pertain to healthcare, identify strategies to improve communication with others, gain insight on how charge nurses can improve unit coordination, what frontline nurses can do to mitigate risk, and understand the adoption of a just culture. A case study will follow regarding a common patient care error to better understand how a just culture can improve quality and safety processes of care. First, let's take a look at what high reliability organizations are and how they could be implemented within healthcare institutions. A quote from a fire department division chief summarizes quite nicely the behavioral dynamic of how high reliability organizations operate. It's in their inherent nature that people are drawn to a problem and, while around the problem, they begin to solve it. So let's answer the question, what is a HRO? It's an organization of high potential risk, but performs in nearly error-free operations. Organizations of high potential risk that also operate reliably can be seen in aerospace, aviation, and in nuclear energy. Now we move into familiarizing ourselves to the core principles of HROs to understand trends of risk and establish processes early on to address the trend. There are five key principles of an HRO. Preoccupation with failure by learning from errors and resolving any breakdowns in system efficiency. Reluctance to simplify the causes of errors and address the big picture on the complexity of the problem. Sensitivity to operations a principle especially important for leaders to always be mindful in developing the capabilities of frontline personnel and embracing feedback to make strategy adjustments. Resilience, the confidence in being successful will require a shared vision and collective courage when facing adversity. And having a difference to expertise, we must trust and rely on the expertise of others to have a multi-dimensional perspective in solving complex situations. Now let's review on how HRO principles are developed and implemented in healthcare institutions. The realm of healthcare organizations are highly chaotic and complex. Medical errors continue to be a critical factor when evaluating system performance and can result to devastating consequences, which is why it is in the interest of providers to understand how HRO system processes could improve quality and save patient care. The HRO initiative is implemented institution-wide, but system processes can be modified to fit each specialty unit. When developing these processes, there are several key guiding principles shared by all members of a team. There is a focus on continuously improving the system, to operate in a culture of ensuring safety, to share responsibility in our efforts towards deficiency-free care, and always pushing forward to improve the quality and system performance. When embarking on the development of a HRO, be mindful that no system is 100% deficiency free. But in organizations of high potential risk, it has been shown that organizations can operate very effectively without committing errors. Communication is key and a shared responsibility and accountability will be imperative when developing a process that is unique for each particular unit. Teamwork is an essential component within the HRO operational framework. Let's go over some key strategies to improve team function. To engage collectively, units can consider formalizing processes to provide opportunities to communicate effectively. This can be in the form of safety rounds, safety huddle, or quality improvement meetings. Whatever method you choose, always engage in a non-threatening and respectful manner. And if you are searching for a proven system for communication, Team Steps is an effective tool. Developed by the Department of Defense, Team Steps allows teams to utilize strategies and tools to enhance performance and patient safety. There are four learning skills within the Team Steps framework. Leadership, to coordinate that messages are understood, shared, and that resources are available. Situation monitoring, 
to be constantly aware of changes to patient status and team dynamics, mutual support to address individual needs, ability to perform the task and maintain accountability, and communication to be clear and ensure that messages are received. I've broken down these learning skills into their individual parts to better understand how these skills can be implemented on your particular unit. The leadership component can be especially useful for charge nurses in coordinating care through a process of a brief, huddle, and debrief. To summarize, a brief can cover assigned roles, expectations, and anticipated outcomes prior to the shift. Huddle can be done midway to assess the situation of your team and patient care concerns. And a debrief to allow an exchange of information to collectively analyze any areas for team improvement. Situation monitoring can follow the acronym STEP, in which the charge nurse or team leader can attain information on the status of the patient, team members, environment, and progress toward the goal. Mutual support can be demonstrated by providing task assistance, feedback, opportunities to plan collaboratively, and by resolving interpersonal conflict. On the last of the team step strategic framework is communication. Methods to ensure proper transmission of information can be done through several techniques. SBAR is an acronym used for relaying information of a patient. S is for situation, what is going on with the patient. B is for background, what is the clinical background. A is for assessment, what do you think the problem is. And R for request or recommendation, what would I do to correct it. Call out is a verbal exchange between a sender and a receiver to organize a team's next step and acknowledge accuracy of information. An example would be a nurse checking airway by saying airway status and receiving nurse would say airway clear. Check back is a technique in which a sender would relay a message, the recipient would repeat and the sender would confirm what was said. Lastly handoff, the transferring of authority and responsibility of a patient to another provider. It is imperative that the handoff plan of care and status is clear and accurate. To collectively take action towards improving quality and safety, we begin to review the importance of adopting a just culture in developing a high reliability organization. As we have explored the complexity of healthcare, we have discovered that it is chaotic, unpredictable, and will continue to be a field of high risk. Despite efforts to strive for deficiency-free care, the question is not if medical errors will occur, but when. Our actions on how we deal with these errors will determine our ability to successfully operate as a HRO. A report was released by the Institute of Medicine titled, To Err is Human. This study revealed the realistic vulnerabilities of human error that goes beyond individual competence and towards how errors occur with faulty systems and other multiple conditions that increase risk. There are three types of errors to consider when understanding the accountability aspects within a just culture. Human error is an advertent action, a slip up, or an honest mistake that anyone can make. At risk behavior making a decision that unintentionally places the patient at risk. An example would be taking shortcuts when completing a procedure or skipping a medication safety check with another nurse. Reckless behavior, making a decision that knowingly places themselves or others in harm's way. An example would be not properly familiarizing oneself to a new IV pump when using it for the first time on a patient, and the patient received an overdose as a result of miscalculating the infusion rate. So now that we know that committing an error is human nature, and we know the three types of errors that can occur, how are we held accountable? This is the nature of a just culture, an environment where frontline constituents can feel safe to report errors to collectively identify system processes in mitigating risk. A just culture is a combination of two other existing cultures that can be found within healthcare management. A punitive culture is simply punishment for all mistakes. This is the most common culture found and the most destructive as it focuses solely on individual responsibility without considering human error, system processes, or other external factors. System processes do not improve and providers will even fear to report errors in the first place 
which can result in a false assessment on operational safety performance. A blameless culture is an environment of no accountability or corrective action for errors that occur. In a just culture, providers are held fairly accountable based on the behavior and process involved behind the error. Human error is met with understanding and reporting the incident is encouraged to identify variables behind the error to collectively improve system processes. At-risk behavior will be addressed in a fair and just manner to correct the behavior and to mitigate future risk. And reckless behavior will not be tolerated. Why adopt a just culture? Evidence has shown that punitive measures do not work long term. Fear of reporting does nothing to improve systems. In a just culture, accountability is maintained, the process of open reporting and learning will expedite methods to improve quality and safety through a focus on system improvement. There is a shared responsibility by all members which develops camaraderie, trust, and teamwork. Most importantly, it is a culture that emphasizes our commitment to patient-centered care. Now let's review the following case study. Trevor and Steve were the only pediatric nurses on duty for the night shift after two of their staff called in sick. It was a busy shift, admitting multiple patients with another one on the way from the ER. One of their patients, in sickle cell crisis, was on a dilated PCA and a Narcan infusion. Both syringes were expired and needed to be replaced immediately to ensure that the patient's pain remained controlled. Trevor obtained a new dilated 30cc syringe and a Narcan 30cc syringe from pharmacy. After checking the doses with Steve, they both proceeded to the room to replace the empty syringes. As Steve was accessing the medical chart to review the PCA orders, Trevor attached a new syringe to the PCA tubing and was about to place it into the PCA machine when he noticed that he inadvertently connected the Narcan syringe to the line instead of the dilated. The case study was an example of human error. There are multiple factors that contributed to the slip-up. Trevor realized that this error was a result of moving too quickly, and with the syringes appearing almost identical, he made the mistake of not being aware of what drug he had on hand. Fortunately, the error was caught before any harm was done. In a just culture, Trevor felt safe to share what he did with other nurses. Collaboratively, they acknowledged that the busy pace can reduce a sense of awareness which can increase risk. So being mindful of completing safety checks and ensuring proper handling of medications were emphasized. Ways to identify a PCA 30cc syringe from other 30cc syringes were also discussed. For this scenario, the distinguishing characteristic was a silver sticker placed on the hub of the PCA syringe from pharmacy. Congratulations, you've successfully completed this in-service. I hope I was able to provide some valuable insight on how the principles of high reliability organizations can be utilized within healthcare institutions. Best wishes on your journeys ahead. Take care and be well.